Hello guys, it's Unders and welcome to this deep dive into Gross Beat, which is a plugin from ImageLine, which allows us to manipulate volume and time. Two samples here, a drum break and some chords. And if you like either of these samples, they're part of my free sample pack. So what Gross Beat allows us to do is manipulate the time of a piece of audio and then also manipulate the volume aspect of it. So let me show you what that would be like. It's only applied to the drums here. So we can have a quick stuttering and break effects on the drums with minimal editing. cross-section that with the volume elements as well, we can have very intricate patterns. Now playing it to drums obviously helps us get a nice quick and fun drum break element going. we can apply it for effects on instruments as well. So let's deep dive into the plugin so we understand everything we're looking at. And as usual, let's start up in the top left here. And we've got this control here, which says time and has a slider next to it. It's not apparently obvious what this does straight away, but it's actually a mix control for time. So if we were to have say complex three on here, it's very obvious what it does to the drums. If we dial back the control, we're now just back to our native beat. And we bring it back in, we've got our effect again. Just to the right hand side, we've got a control that shows us the manipulation of time. And we can actually control this with the mouse as well. And we can bring it all the way back. And we can see it's actually got the count of the bars as it goes through. Watch it. you can see where it's stepping back to. We can do this manually. And create all manner of interesting effects ourselves that way. We're gonna stay over on the left-hand side and we've got this little arrow icon here. And there's a couple of options in here that are very useful. Click reduction, for example, when working on melodic sounds with very fast transients or when working on drums can vary in what they really need. So low will generally be fine on drums. However, high is much better for melodic sounds. It just allows a quick cross fade to happen before any quick volume or time adjustments, which stops that popping happening as frequently. We can also have a smoothing attack compensation, which does a similar thing and very helps on melodic sounds. We have remove DC offset if there's a DC offset issue in the sample. HQ resampling, I would generally always keep that on. Unless you're really struggling for CPU, you can switch it off and just re-enable it when you come to your bounce settings in FL Studio. And if you scratching clock, which is what we just looked at on the right hand side here. And then we obviously have about. Below here we have a preset grid and selecting one of these will change visually what we see on the right hand side. And there's also like changing the preset for the time manipulation. And below does the same thing but for volume. And you can see that the shape adjustment is now changed into the orange color which represents volume. When we have two engaged they overlap each other. The last one being selected being the dominant on the top. At the bottom of the volume we had to have an attack release and tension setting. We can manipulate those as well. And next to the attack and release settings we have a little magnifying glass and that will just hide this window on the right hand side and we again have a mix control for the volume worth noting as well in the preset menu there are a good set of presets and if we were to grab one it does change just about everything in each so let's have a look at the window on the right hand side now which will likely be what we're going to use the most there's some things to note in here up in the top left hand corner we've got some controls these are going to allow us to do some things quite quickly so if we take a preset here we've got things like a flip vertically which is going to completely change uh, the inversion of what we're doing in this case we won't get anything <laughs> 
You can scale levels, which allows us to manipulate things on a whole very quickly. We can choose like the center point and the offsets. We can normalize levels so they'll max out. And notice your undo histories in here as well. Decimate points, it will remove any points it deems unnecessary. As you can see here, there's two up here and it removed those. We can do that again. Deems those points unnecessary, so it takes it out. It's a CPU helper. Smooth up, as you can see, we'll make a much smoother transition. It uses a lot more points uh, and is actually CPU intensive. And we've got a step sequencer when we do create sequence as well, which allows us to do things like this. very, very quickly and easily. Whatever we have selected in here will apply. So if I was to select the volume control and do create sequence and accept, it will apply to the volume. Just below that drop down arrow, we have snap on or off. Now generally, if you want things to be perfectly in time, like working with the drums here, you're going to keep the snap on and you can add a point by right clicking and it's going to snap to relevant points in time. So this will just take us back one step. So just to do a repeated step back would look like this. However, if we take snap off, we start being able to move anywhere on the grid. It's much harder to line things up, but can be more creative with things like vocals and other melodic sounds. It can also work well if a beat is really heavily swung. To put snap back on, we can choose any of the grid options below here. Other options for the editing we do, we have step editing, for example, which gives us a pencil tool. This is much more useful if we want to put something like this in. And this is relevant to the snap grid that we'll have put in. So if I put this onto 116, you see it's far more flexible. If I put it on 14, for example, it's going to be in 14 steps. To get back to something useful, I could just to get back to something useful. I could draw something in like this, get as close as possible. There we are. Let me turn step edit off and we're back to how we were previously. I can right click to snap my points in here. You've got freeze edit. Now the freeze edit will turn the points off and this helps us out with CPU. So once we've got everything set as we want it to be, we can just leave it to go. Lots of CPU saving options built in here. And lastly, in this bottom section, we've got time and volume. We can just switch between our two views, whichever we'd like to have access to. At the bottom of each option, for example, here it says time empty. It's that very first slot over here on the left. We can rename them to anything we like from here. We'll just call it test, for example. And now that's renamed as test. And we can link to volume slot as well. So if I link the two together, we were to click on test up here and drag upwards, it's going to move through different options. And you'll see that some of them are in fact linked together and the volume slots are going to move in sync. Set slots linked to set volume patterns as well. We can have key held options. We can play out the options we would like to have in performance on a keyboard. However, I'm going to show you how to do it a much nicer and more elegant way in FL Studio using automation. But we can record MIDI notes in and perform with this plugin. And we can have a one shot option as well. So when we switch something over, say this option here, we'll have it switched onto a one shot. It should then return back to test. Now visually it doesn't change here, but it bounces back over to test. So let's do that again. We're going to be on test. We're going to choose scratch part one because it's a one shot. It will go back to the test rhythm, which is that single dum, 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 dum. Back over to test. That allows us to perform with it a lot easier and click and record automation in. Again, I'm going to show you a method that I like to use. Now we've got our hold options, trigger sync options, so we can only trigger it on a specific beat. 
And we've got post sync option, so it can't come out offbeat as well. I'm just going to reset test. And let me show you how I would use this in FL Studio to get the desired effect. What I'm going to show would apply to the time section and the volume section. But I'll just show the volume section for now, and you can repeat it and play with it as desired. So on test here, I'm going to right click and I'm going to do create automation clip. That gives me a fresh automation clip in here. Let's put it below this melody. We're going to switch that on. I'm going to hold shift and drag down just to put it below my drums. I'm going to drag track two up to bind it with track one. That now gives me an automation clip that is always linked to these drums here. And now each value in the time section here in gross beat has a set parameter that we can apply to that automation clip. And it's really easy to get to. So let's take scratch part five, for example. If we right click it, we can copy value. And over in our automation clip, we can paste some points in. And we just do a couple of points like this. So it's in the right sort of place. And on the higher points here, we're just going to paste value, which is 14%. We're going to paste that on both of the points. Now, when we play this back, it's going to read the automation for gross beat and it will take it off of test, put it to scratch part five for one for one run uh, over these four bars here and then take it back. Now we can take that a step further. We know we don't maybe want that to last for the whole time. So we could really simply go to say mute, uh, turn it off. So let's copy that value. We can add that in by putting our points in like we did before. Uh, we're going to paste the values here. And we're just going to copy that one because we did adjust a value just there. So now, And that way we've got complete control of our performance and we can mix and match it in any way that we like. Guys, that was a deep dive into how a gross beat works and particularly at the end there, how I really like to use it. I hope the video was helpful for you. If it was, thank you for subscribing to the channel. Please bash a like on the video. And if you have any questions, throw it in the comments down below. And we'll see you guys in the next one.